Let's now talk about signal detection. Signal detection. So our task or our problem is, or our example, is um, how to detect the heartbeat in an ECG. Yeah, so imagine we've got here our classical ECG, which looks like that, and there's another one here. So that's our our ECG here. And so the question is, so how can we generate a detector which is detecting these moments here in time? Yeah, so to to generate a beep for every heartbeat. So how do we do that? And so the solution to this here is a so-called using a so-called template. So the detection as as a template matching process. So the idea is the following. Let's now have the ECGs a bit more cartoonish. So like that. And what we do is we run a template which looks exactly like these pulses here. Just one pulse over over this time here. And um, if there's a match, then we are generating a pulse. So there's a match and then we're generating a pulse out of this pulse. So what is the matching process in terms of match of mathematics? Matching in terms of math. And that's very simple. So we have our signal and we've got our template. We just multiply these two ones with each other and then we accumulate this product here. Accumulate the product. And then here we usually have a threshold which defines if it's detected or not. Detected. Let's draw a cartoonish version of this detection process here. So if this is our signal. This is here the um, template. So imagine we have a signal which looks like that and the template looks like this. So roughly where this here belongs together. So then this part here generates a positive response and this part here generates a negative one. 
And so, ideally, what we see here, that they cancel out. Yeah, so we're getting zero response. However, if we have something like this, which are looking, looking totally identical here, then the product out of these two here generates us a squared version of these two. So this will look like this. So maximum response. So that's the general idea of this correlation operation. And so now the question is, so how do we, how can we implement this here with our filters? So what we would like to do is we would like to implement an FIR filter with this. So how to, how to perform correlation on an FIR filter. So again the question is, so what was FIR filter again? So an FIR filter essentially performs a convolution operation. convolution operation but not correlation so what was convolution again so the definition of um, convolution was e2 t as from 0 to infinity and then S of tau, H of T minus tau, D tau. So this was a definition of convolution. Convolution. So now, what is correlation? So the correlation if we define this here, so then S of tau and R of tau, D tau. So that's the definition of correlation. So now we see the um, similarities, but also what we need to fix. So they are identical here. And then we've got these two terms here. So this means in the convolution, the time is here, our integration is running backwards, whereas in the correlation it's running forward. Yeah, so that's backwards. And this is running forward. But that's obviously easy to fix so essentially the only thing what we need to do is, so the idea behind this is now obviously that we time reverse our template. Yeah, so we could just write R of minus T. The problem is that this is no longer, this is non-causal. Yeah, so in order to fix that, we create an R of capital T minus T, and this is the duration of the template. So with that idea, then our convolution operation essentially is running like that. So our S of tau, so that's our input signal. And this is now 
convolved with a template here. So t minus and then t minus tau. So that's our time. That's our time reversal here with the t, and then the tau is our convolution tau here. And so again, so t is here the duration of the template, and this makes it makes it causal. So this one here, well, this is non-causal. This one is here causal now. And so with that, we have um, starting at t here, and then we're subtracting t from from it and um, adding tau. So we see already this is coming towards a correlation operation here. Because if we multiply this out here, e of t, then we're getting here integral from 0 to t, s of tau, and then r of t minus t plus tau d tau. So now in order to get rid of this of this t here, of this this here, we could just evaluate this e of t here at e of capital T. Yeah, so if we do that, then we have here s of tau and then this multiplied by just r of tau d tau. And this is here here correlation operation. And so the um, definition of this here, this h of t, and this was our impulse response. And this is r of t minus small t. This here, this is called matched filter. So this means the um, impulse response here. That's our impulse response. It's just a time reversed template. So to draw this again in a single processing data flow diagram, so we've got our S of T, that's our input signal. And then here we've got our h of t, which is just r of capital T minus t. And t is the duration of the match filter. And then the output here, if we're looking at a plot here, then so after t, then there there should be should be the match and the threshold here. So at this point we should evaluate our match in this in this filtering approach here.